Welcome back. Today I have Sabina Nawaz here. Um, Sabina is the CEO Global Coach, leadership keynote speaker, and writer working in over 26 countries. She advises C-level executives in Fortune 500 corporations, government agencies, nonprofits, and academic institutions. She also teaches uh, faculty at Northeastern University and facilitates faculty fellowship development program at Drexel. Uh, she spent over 14 years at Microsoft. Uh, Sabina has spoken at hundreds of seminars and events and conferences, including at TEDx. And she currently sits on the board of uh, Power and Systems, a leadership development institute. Uh, she writes for Forbes, hbr.org and inc.com. Uh, please welcome uh, Sabina Nawaz. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for having me on this. So before we uh, went online here, uh, we were talking about something that really grabbed my attention. Um, and you said that working from home can be bad for your health. Um, I'd love it if you would say a little bit more about that. Absolutely. In fact, uh, this week, my uh, article on Thrive Global talks about the three hidden health hazards uh, of working from home. And uh, there are many ways in which, for those of, uh, those of you who are not used to working from home, if you're not mindful, it can really sabotage your well-being um, when we're working from home. There are three, at least three different ways. One is working from home is bad for your heart. Two, working from home is bad for your kidneys. And three, working from home is bad for your teeth or can be bad for all of these. Heart health. Uh, as many of you already know, the term that sitting is the new smoking. Mm -hmm. We don't move enough in our corporate jobs already. However, when we're in a work situation, even if we have back-to-back -back meetings, we finish one meeting and we get up and we walk to the next meeting. Whereas when we're tethered to our screens, somebody yesterday described it as a ball and chain, you have one meeting finish and the next meeting is on, sometimes in the exact same Zoom line, back to back, there's no time for movement uh, and breaks. Mm -hmm. And I can talk about how you address these things as well, but that's, so it's really harmful because we are not moving at all. People are complaining about back pain already and it's not just because they're using bad chairs, which I would encourage you to also upgrade if you're able to. Um, if for instance, you're not spending as much money eating out, maybe you can invest some of that in a great ergonomic mm -hmm. chair, uh, but it's also not moving. Um, your kidneys, either people are not drinking enough water or they're not going to the bathroom often enough. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, they're back to back to back to back and not taking that time for breaks. Again, there are several ways in which you can address that but it, it can be harmful to your health. Mm -hmm. And the third one is, we are not brushing our teeth. <laughs> so uh, Dan Ariely, who is, uh, uh, works at Duke University, has done some phenomenal research. One of the things he said, likes to say is that the best kept part of our bodies are our teeth. Not because we're meticulous about our dental health, but because of social acceptance and what that means to us as human beings. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be rejected by other people because our breath smells bad. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when we are not in contact with people and we've got social distancing, even when we are, halitosis is no longer an issue. Right. And so we, and given back to back to back, it's easy to neglect to brush our teeth Mm -hmm. Because we don't have that social pressure now right. to do so. And that's terrible for our dental health. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, um, I, I was on a, on a webinar and somebody said that. Somebody did say, by the way, if you're here and, and you're not used to working from home, go, go get up right now and brush your teeth. And I, I was really struck by that. So you're the second person I've heard say this in a week. Um, what, so... What, what do we do about this, right? Like, wh what do we do? We're not moving enough. Yeah. We're not keeping to the routines that we normally would be if we were going outside, right? And right. We're, we're not practicing good health because we're not drinking enough water. We're not going to the bathroom. We're not doing all of that stuff. Those are really basic things and they sound like basic things. How, how do we maintain that as remote workers? That's great. Well, firstly, when you're having a meeting, chances are you're not the only one whose back is hurting where, or your behind is feeling a little sore from sitting for so long. So what if together, first ask each other, 
hey, who needs a bio break? And can we agree to keep it to two minutes strictly? So yeah. let's just go have a one function break, come back. And now we're able to be more comfortable, more present with each other. Mm -hmm. Second, I encourage people to do a 15 second movement break at the top of every meeting or in the middle of every meeting. And that just simply looks like this. Everybody stands up. I like to do jumping jacks. So I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks mm -hmm. in my 15 second movement break. And someone else might stretch yeah. or do high knees or whatever it is, your movement of choice, that 15 seconds. I find, I, I do this with people. I just did this yesterday with 300 people. Everybody sits back down, totally energized because we've had just a little bit of an opportunity to get the blood. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I love that. And uh, if you're wearing a Fitbit or any, anything else like that, set your activity tracker for 12 hours, 250 steps every hour. It automatically buzzes. If a meeting does get done early, most of our default is to turn back to our email and, and slam out a few more messages. Right. I have told myself I am not allowed to do that until I hit my step goal for that hour. Mm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just got in probably, say, 30 steps, which means I'll have another 220 to be done by the time I'm done talking to you, Marie. Right. So <laughs> if, if I'm done before the hour, I'm going to quickly slam on those steps before I sit back down and look at my email or get on to the next meeting. So, and you could even create a healthy competition with each other on that. So that's around movement and mm -hmm. also taking uh, bio breaks. The other is for drinking water. It's not just having one cup of water in front of you, but the night before, before the craziness of the day starts, fill an entire jug with water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have this, I fill this up every night and it's, it, it holds the amount of water I set as a goal to drink in a day anyhow. Oh, wow. So, okay. So as the day progresses, I'm on the West coast. So you can see I'm about halfway through my day and I'm halfway through the jug of water. Yeah. And uh, it's great because while working from home can be hazardous, it can actually be great for your health because I might end up drinking more water this way. Right. Than I normally would have. Mm -hmm. and, oh, by the way, as a side note, I do the same with my vitamins. I have five vitamins I take during the day. I don't like to pop them all up at the, uh, all in at the same time because it kind of gets stuck in my throat. But if I lay them out all five at the, at the night before, then over the course of my meetings, I can have one vitamin per meeting and I'm done with all my vitamins and I feel like I've just gotten a gold star from my doctor. <laughs> and lastly, it's your teeth. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, when I first started working from home, I noticed that sometimes I'd, I'd tell myself, I, I don't want to brush my teeth until I've had breakfast. Right. But after breakfast, it's too late because then I'm like in my right. meetings and then right. I'm like, well, I might as well wait till after lunch. And pretty soon it's 4 p.m. before I brush my teeth. Just awful. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now I don't wait for breakfast. Uh, hey, gosh, if I'm in a position where I can brush my teeth again, wonderful. I can do that again mm -hmm. after breakfast or rinse out. But before I leave the bathroom in the morning, my teeth are brushed. Yeah. Whether or not I've had breakfast. Mm -hmm. That's the, to me, that's the only way to make sure I get it done. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. It's going to go by the wayside. Now, for all of these, these are, as you said, these are small things to do. Right. But they take actually tremendous amount of attention, intention, willpower to do. One of my articles on Harvard Business Review is around this concept of micro habits, that to achieve big goals, you really have to start small, micro small. Mm -hmm. And we don't like to do that as overachievers. However, the only way to overachieve is to start by underachieving. Yep. Otherwise, we will not uh, get there. I love that. Yeah. For, for 20 years, I wanted to run and never managed. And then until I started with micro habits and I managed... It took me two years, so much better than 20 years. Right. <laughs> and I ran my first 10K at the end of those two years. But wow. it started by the first micro habit was simply getting in gym clothes before I sat down to work. <laughs> I wasn't even going to the gym. <laughs> then it was, you know, get on the treadmill, but walk. Mm -hmm. And then run, but only run 0.1 miles till you slowly build that up to a 10K. Right, right. That's fantastic. I love that because 
you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that it makes sense for everything, right? So even if you're, you know, uh, whether it's your water habits or whether it's a concentration thing, right? The point one micro goal works over time. And, you know, if you do one push up a day and you increase by one push up a day, by the end of the year, you've increased by 365 push ups in a day, right? <laughs> Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, I, I often tell people, uh, stick with whatever your micro habit is for two weeks, and then increase by 10%. Mm -hmm. If you if you manage to stick with it consistently for two weeks, and, and, and there are clients who, who go, oh, yeah, I'm not working out. Well, from tomorrow, I'm going to go out three, three times a, uh, a week for 30 minutes. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, not going to work. Work. That's, that's right. just That's just practical <laughs> thinking. We know that's not going to work. How about you do one push up? And they look at me like, oh, that's ridiculous. And I say, if you look at me and say that's ridiculous, that means you've exactly hit a micro habit. That's yeah. how small it needs to be. Ridiculously small that you will do it. I love that. So what are some good micro habits that we can do as remote workers? <laughs> awesome. So if, one, of course, is filling that jug of water. And uh, often one way for micro habits to succeed is you piggyback it on a habit that you do. Now, most of us, I think, even now, are brushing our teeth at night before mm -hmm. we go to bed. So if that's a habit you do consistently, what can you piggyback on that? I might piggyback my filling my water jug with my to toothbrushing. So literally put a sticky next to your toothbrush. Or let's say you habitually drink coffee every morning. Well, while your coffee is percolating, you can do 60 high knees. Right, right, right. And, mm -hmm. and do that uh, exercise. Um, you can also, um, another mic, I don't know if it's a micro habit, but you could, when you go to the grocery store, buy your healthy snacks, because that's another danger, mm -hmm. um, and put them at your desk. So uh, at my desk right now, I have pistachios. Yeah. Because I was flush from a trip to Costco. And so uh, I, it's much better for me and my health to eat a small amount of pistachios. I don't know if you can see this, but I have some mm -hmm. pistachio shells from my right. earlier meeting today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's much easy, better for me to have than to go to the fridge. Right. If, that's you smart. Know, so you don't even have to get up and go look. Yeah. And when you're working from home, you mm -hmm. might want to create social distance from your fridge. Right. <laughs> so that you don't get to the unhealthy things. Right. I love that. Um, on, on, the, on the converse end of that, what kind of boundaries should we be setting as uh, remote workers? Yes. Boundaries are super important. Uh, people's works and li work and lives are bleeding into each other and everybody thinks it's okay to now party on with work at any time of day or week. So one for ourselves how often are you moving away from the computer? How often are you moving away from your device? Mm -hmm. uh, it's more important because uh, also people are complaining of headaches right now mm -hmm. uh, because they are um, with a moving video and then doing all the other work we do. We're just, our eyes are too much um, focused on a screen. In fact, nonstop. So when you have a break, how can you go outside for a moment if it's safe to go outside? How can you um, mm -hmm. do something like call a friend if you need to talk to someone, whatever it is, but mo actually leave your office, leave your space in front of your computer and get your eyes off the screen. Nice. So that's, um, that's one piece. That's great. That's great advice. Um, one, other, one other thing that I've been asking the, the CEOs I coach to do is institute 12 to 12.30 as a no meeting zone where people can go have lunch with their families. This is a mm -hmm. unique opportunity yeah. for us to be connected more with our families. How often do we get that luxury? Yeah. How wonderful would it be if we could all unplug for half hour and go do that? I love that. It's almost like living in, in uh, you know, Italy or something where, the, where they take two hour lunches. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, in a normal thing, I would feel like I was playing hooky, right? If right. I, yeah. Right, right, right. That's awesome. Um, what, so how can we take all this? And once we go back to, you know, working, you know, for those of us who work in offices and outside the home, how can we take these practices and use them for later? Yeah. 
one of the biggest things I'm seeing is people realizing how much time they're wasting on things that are not really necessary. Mm -hmm. And because that's, that's all had to be, a lot of that has had to be shed from people's schedules. What's most important right now and how do we focus on that? So I hope that one of the things we'll take forward is what can we ditch forever that really wasn't serving us? It was habitual. Do we really always have to meet for an hour or can right. we meet until it's necessary and then call it good, et cetera. So what are some things that are no longer serving us that we can just let go of? So that's one piece. Another is I, I, in working from home situations right now, I'm telling people to connect more often, but in smaller durations. Mm -hmm. And so that we can stay connected day by day, our, our emotional state, our level of motivation changes. So it's good to, and things are changing. So we need to also stay in touch more often, but our staying power is lower. And so having shorter stand-up meetings, five minute check-ins, 15 minute meetings, more helpful than a 90 minute session. Mm. Uh, so how could you do more of that back in the work world? Uh, long before this crisis, I had written about mm, converting most of your one hour meetings to 45 minute meetings. I truly believe that the majority of the one hour meetings can actually be done in 45. If we have the forcing function of 45, we're gonna be less wasteful with our time and more focused. Besides, in most organizations, meetings start at least five minutes, if not 15 minutes late, because right. somebody's rushing in from the previous one. Right, right, right. So, and instead of having a meeting go from one to 145, have it go from 115 to two. So it removes your reason for being late coming into the meeting. Mm -hmm. It gives you a moment to have that movement break, drink some water, go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do to take care of yourselves. And you know that you have to stop at the top of the hour. Whereas with 145, we kind of go, oh yeah, but we can yeah, really- that's you. That. Right, right, right. <laughs> I love that. I, I, yeah. I love that so much. That's something people don't think of to start at yeah. 115, yes. you know? I think, yes, and on the other side of the spectrum, Marie, I think five weeks ago, if somebody had told me, hey, Sabina, I want you to run an offsite for a C-suite and have a, that needs to have a really difficult conversation. Or I want you to run an offsite for 17 people. Or I want you to do a workshop for 300 people, all by Zoom. Yeah. I would have said, no way. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I have done all three of those things in the last two weeks. Right, right. So what can we learn from there when we go back to work, which is, what do we think is not possible? And if we had, if we took away all resources, would we say it was possible? Wow. Interesting. So do you think, um, given, given that you facilitated these things that five weeks ago you would have said was impossible, do you think that remote work will become more the norm where, where it has been possible? You know, do you think we'll be doing more online? Do you think that, you know, or, or do you think we'll be eager to get back? I think it will be a blend of the two. Uh, mm -hmm. There are people who are really eager to get back who are, uh, and or that their home situation is not a, uh, a conducive situation. Right. Sometimes maybe not even a safe situation. Uh, right. Where to work. So mm -hmm. there are many reasons why people want to go back to work. And I think that we can be at the very least, I think what will happen is that we our online meeting hygiene will get a lot better. So mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, we have people in say headquarters who are all sitting around a conference room table and then one or two people calling from uh, Asia Pacific region or Europe or whatever, if, if the headquarters are in North America. And those two poor people like can barely get a word in edgewise. It's two in the morning for them and all this stuff. So at the very least, I'm hoping that we have much greater empathy for our remote colleagues who don't have the luxury of working face to face with us and how we include them and collaborate with them in healthier ways. I also think that there are efficiencies to be gained with doing some things remotely for everyone where we maybe save the commute time if people want, uh, say one day a week or whatever. 
mm-hmm. uh, or have shorter meetings. So I think all of those will happen in addition to the desire to uh, collaborate across the hallway with each other. I love that. I love that so much. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's heartening to hear that, that, you know, we've actually developed some really great habits from this, right? We've developed some, you know, we've, we've innovated literally in, in a matter of weeks, you you know, you're, you're doing these things that you never would have done online before. Right. No. Um, what, what are your best tips for running, running a good meeting, especially with something like a high stakes thing where you have to have a difficult conversation? Yeah. So the first thing, especially in times like this is a check-in and mm-hmm. just so your check-in doesn't, uh, doesn't last all the way to a checkout. Uh, it's a one word, one sentence check-in one word that captures where your state of mind is right now and one sentence that elaborates on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, for instance, I'm, and allowing for a range of emotions to come out through that, that it's okay. Uh, Like earlier I did a a workshop for my kid's school on this very topic. And I was excited because I was excited about giving back to a community that has given my child and, and us a lot. Right. Uh, but if you ask me to check in right now, I would say I'm a little um, frustrated because my uh, uh, our printer is on this side of my desk and uh, one of my sons decided in my last meeting, he thought he could crawl behind me and not be seen and go and get something in the printer. And to me, firstly, he was visible, but more importantly, I don't want anybody in the room with me when I'm talking with a client of mine. Right, and right. That wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sorry so, that happened. I didn't mean to laugh. It's funny the way you describe so, it. No, no, but that, that's the reality for most of us, right? Right, now. right. And in most cases, what I say is that's going to happen sometimes. And you just, instead of awkwardly trying to hide it, invite that person, introduce themselves, and, and right. um, you know, <laughs> facilitate right, right. a quick exit. Right. So, yeah. So, um, so, so a check, a one word, one sentence check in. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I I work with um, uh, some executives who are who are deaf, and I have learned a lot from them about the power of using not just your voice, but but your body, your body mm-hmm. language. Mm-hmm. And so there are uh, several great tips around body language that that was the only way I was able to um, run an offsite with nineteen people is it would have become really inefficient if we hadn't used some of our signs, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if I asked a question and the answer was yes, people would just do a one thumbs up. Or in American Sign Language, you can do this, which is like knocking on a door. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if you like an idea that someone else has said, instead of now wasting another five sentences, essentially saying the same thing, just do two thumbs up. Mm. Uh, if you want to say something, because on the computer, your voices cancel out if more than one right. person is speaking at the same time, raise your hand. That is the moderator. I can then create a batting order and go, okay, Joe, you're first, Henry, you're next, yep. Fernando, you're second, mm-hmm. a third, and so on. And then I can call upon you that way. So using signs to help uh, accelerate and embellish the communication that we're having. And similar to the check-in, you can also do a checkout at the end of the meeting. One word that captures what your state of mind is right now, leaving this meeting, or one sentence that says what struck you as you had this conversation, which as the convener of the meeting can also give you really valuable feedback on what worked, what really landed. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's, that's excellent advice. Um, What, what, what do you, uh, what's your best advice for CEOs who are, newly home, you know, dealing with their team, suddenly remote, and um, how, how can they make this transition easier for both themselves and for their, uh, their workers? Yeah, there are so many things. And um, um, if I were to keep it to a few, one would be to understand that not everybody is in their situation. They, uh, in some cases, they might have a second home off on an island with a, a, a wonderful big office right. dedicated just to them. Uh, or they have, say, a stay-at-home uh, partner who's taking care of their toddlers and or um, school-age kids and doing the homeschooling. So realizing that uh, everybody is going to be coming from a different place and making sure you create some 
space for that, some accommodations for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is, of course, taking care of yourself. For yeah. every CEO or every manager who has to manage their own situation, they have 10, 12, 1200 people also looking to them to manage, help manage their situation. Right. So how do you put on your own oxygen mask first mm -hmm. before you help other people? Um, I often liken this um, that managers are like the first responders of the corporate world. Now, clearly not as dangerous a job, first sure. responders are doing a lot more, but metaphorically speaking, they are there to take care of a lot of other people and none of us has enough equipment tools right. to do that. So mm -hmm. what are your personal protection equipment needs that you can go fill? That jug of water, that, right. that night of sleep, that exercise before you take care of everyone else. Otherwise it's really hard. I love that. Um, before we, before we signed on, uh, we were talking about, um, uh, gratitude and I, I would love for you to share, uh, what, what you were saying about gratitude and, and what that means in this time. Absolutely. In this crazy time, we're all running around fighting fires, figuring out which side is up and coming to terms with the new normal and that we're never going to go back to business as usual. It's going to be a different world, even on the other side of the crisis. In the midst of that, it's super important to express gratitude for people who work, either report up through you or who are colleagues or mm -hmm. your managers, anybody, your family. We are all going above and, uh, above and beyond by default right now in this time. We're all doing the best we can. So how do you express a gratitude? And oh, by the way, there is tons of research that shows expressing gratitude is actually good for you. Yep. So mm -hmm. Not doing it for them, at least do it for you. It will make you happier and healthier if you take the time to express gratitude. How might you do that in, uh, for uh, workers? One would be, mm, I don't know about you in your city, but in our city at 7 p.m. every day, we get on our balconies and we all uh, applaud the essential workers, essential um, um, yeah. business workers. And it's a wonderfully uplifting moment um, for us in a sense of community of, oh, here are our neighbors, we're all out there. Someone's banging on a drum, someone's clapping, <laughs> someone's whistling. Right all of this stuff and we're getting creative about expressing that appreciation. So in the work setting, how might you express appreciation? For example, um, could you have a two minute, and it only lasts for two minutes, every day at 4 p.m. say, an online, of, whether it's Slack or uh, mm -hmm. Teams or Zoom or whatever, a way where uh, people just shower appreciation for people in an online chat forum. I love that. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. Then so mm -hmm. you capture that, boom, you're done. Yeah. And not done as in checking the box done, but it's a way to get a lot of showering of gratitude all at once where everybody's participating as an, as a community. I love that. That's, I'm, I'm going to try that with my team today. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, speaking of gratitude, I'm, I'm grateful that you were able to join us for this. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Absolutely. I'd love to hear from people, both questions you have right now. Uh, I may not be able to answer every single one of them, but I will incorporate them into articles I write. Uh, so if, if people want to get in touch with me, info, I-N-F-O, at sabinanawaz.com. That's S-A-B-I-N-A-N-A-W-A-Z or Z.com. Uh, and Marie, I'll send this to you in writing as well, so you can post in your show notes. Um, uh, if you email me at, with the word subscribe and Marie's name, I'll know where it came from. And I will also send you a free one page resource guide. That means you're subscribing to my email list. Mm -hmm. I send emails about twice a month with my latest articles on Harvard Business Review, Forbes, Thrive Global, etc. But I will also send you a free one page resource guide that is tied to many of the things that we've just been discussing. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. I forgot to mention people can, of course, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those things as well. This was my pleasure. I hope that this was helpful. I know that anything any of us does right now is done in that spirit of generosity and helpfulness. I also know that it's none of us has the ability to provide something that is fully sufficient. So I hope that 
everyone yeah. in turn can take something like this and go help someone else. I have to say, you've inspired me today. I'm, I, I, as soon as we do this, I'm going to get up and I'm going to move. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. So, you know, you've, you've, you've helped one for one person already. <laughs> we Thank have you. you just made my day then, Marie. Oh, yay. <laughs> Well, yeah, so get in touch with Sabina and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Marie.